It's crazy because last week, I would have argued, was the most important episode since the beginning of Dr. Stone. I think this episode just carries on that legacy and shakes me to my core to the point where I say, honestly, I don't remember really watching Dr. Stone ever feeling this worried that at a moment's notice Senku could be eliminated because... The pure horror of just casually removing everyone other than four or five people that we had on that ship because petrification occurred once again. The way they build into that moment is so bone chilling and horrifying that it has my mind racing and the fact that Senku at a blink of an eye, a snap of your fingers, could be turned to stone, whether it's the master of this island, whether it's a supernatural being we can't comprehend, it doesn't change the fact that not only were they building in to saying why would there be people under the water when there should have been no one there when the initial petrification beam occurred, to then seeing them all turn to stone like that, Dr. Stone didn't miss. Full live reaction to this insanity filled episode is available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts you can head on over there and consider supporting but yeah we gotta talk about this we gotta analyze it and we gotta react to it it's just I'm it's just insane to see Dr. Stone halfway through the first core of season 3 feeling like it's dropping bombshells that shows usually start out with which this show did but still finding ways to really impress because the whole why man, this mystery, is it a being, is it a person, what caused the petrification to begin with? As we're watching, I'm thinking, oh, what if it's like a nuclear weapon style thing, like a beam of some sort? What if maybe it originated on the island and someone's now using it, right? The fact that you're building in, you have the sonars, people staying behind investigating, and to just see people underwater. Initially, I'm not thinking anything of it because we see people turn to stone all the time. But what's brilliant is how they, the ominous like sound effect direction, the VAs quaking, the fact that as they're explaining it like, initially, the people who were on this island, there was no people around the island when the initial beam occurred. So why would there be people underwater almost looking like they were fleeing? And then we build in, we keep building in, the momentum's going, your mind's racing, or at least I know it was for me. And I'm thinking there ain't no way a second petrification beam occur because if that's so, then Senku and company are screwed. And this is me saying this prior to seeing the ship turn the stone because I'm thinking, okay, if someone's saying why over communication relays, that means that they're not happy with Senku being currently not turned to stone. And if that's the case, and there's something or someone or an object that can turn them to stone who doesn't like them being active, what if, because we know Senku's father in space comes down, builds a civilization, what if so many of these people were turned to stone because Y-Man realized that some people escaped the blast, and then you see his ship turned to stone? and it is absolutely bone chilling. I mean seriously, this is as shocking as the initial petrification when I had no idea what Dr. Stone was going to be and I just see a giant green blast turn everyone into stone for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of years. And to see, you know, an, an image, a face from Senku, like we initially got that tease when they're on the boat and the Y-Man popped up and we saw an angry side of him. This was that turned up to 11 and holy hell, like even if they quickly go back to their general comfy style that Dr. Stone's know for, it doesn't change the fact that that moment and thinking about like, okay, now that we're on this island, if we try to flee, we're probably going to end up like this. Or if we come into contact with the wrong person, we're going to end up like this. Like this show literally just took it up a notch to a point where they just pulled a plot twist and the rug from underneath my feet at a point where most stories are starting to wind down. Dr. Stone cranked it up to 11. And honestly, all I can say is bravo to that. Now, there wasn't complete shock. There was some simpler moments. I mean, we essentially get Dr. Stone CSI edition, and it was pretty great seeing how they were initially like tracking down from the seashells to the hair to the fingerprint to kind of find the trajectory of where this woman ultimately would go. And honestly, the girl's got some acting chops, you gotta admit. Now, I'm not sure if I trust her or not. Mainly, I want to just because I think the narrative of someone wanting to infiltrate and betray a master who could potentially turn anyone he doesn't like into stone is a really interesting narrative, but there was a lot of crocodile tears, whether it was the initial three goons who were proposing and she was crying, she turns around, she squirts some water into her eye to make it really look right, and then she starts flirting with everyone. The difference between Senku and, you know, our nameless boy who eventually kind of finally gets his name dropped in last week's episode, you know, he's basically nutting off to space. Senku's basically saying, back off, wench, I want nothing that you're selling. 
But I like the fact that, you know, apparently this woman is kind of revered. It looks like there's at least a couple of tribes, a, a couple of cultures who basically are quite upset by the idea of her not marrying someone from their own tribe. And the fact that Senku and Gen, they pull out their old tear gas and they just blast everyone around. And she brings up the fact that she's trying to do the long game. She's trying to con off the master. She doesn't even know what he looks like. I think as a narrative, that'd be really interesting. But at the same time, I'm totally expecting her to pull a gun of some sort out on these characters and turn them over to the man who could be causing petrification. And honestly, I'm still waiting for a red herring. I'm waiting for the master to have no ability to control the petrification. There's probably just something happening on this island where if you try to leave, it occurs and he's taking credit or something. And because they have no way to disprove it, maybe something like that's occurring. I don't know. I'm just spitballing here. But that's kind of the fun of, of where Dr. Stone, the, the new world, is at this point. I mean, I've been an avid supporter of this show ever since it debuted with episode 1 of season 1. And the more I watch, the more I say the way they expand is just so interesting. Because if they don't find the Platinum, if they don't find their unlimited like source of revival juice, everyone on that boat screwed, right? You can attempt to sail it with the four or five people you have, but you're probably gonna turn to stone yourself. So if you don't find the item you're looking for, you have to find a cave and you have to make some to at the very least get Ryusei back aboard because we need the captain for sure. And honestly, the fact that the idea of when the Y-Man's voice popped up, it was frightening because what if this is the one responsible for petrification? But at the same time, where like, it could have just been a freak accident. It could have been a, a cycle of the earth that it happens every so many thousands of years. But we don't think it's just gonna like that, we're gonna lose everyone aboard that ship. And then it happens, and your mind really starts racing being like, okay, for the first time since it initially happened, I truly feel like Senku could actually lose at a moment's notice. Not because he's not thinking things through or because he's, you know, not being as smart as he once was, but because there's a force we don't comprehend and at a moment's notice we could be screwed. And that's honestly exciting for a narrative, but frightening because I love these characters and want to see them succeed. I mean, it's interesting how they're going the route of this man basically from a baby remembering things. And initially, sometimes I start thinking like, you know, could he really do that? But then I remember I look at characters jumping from like the ground all the way to the top of the trees or you know, just doing things that are a little more supernatural to begin with. And I remember, okay, well, Dr. Stone does have a few bells and whistles that are enhanced to the point that we shouldn't really compare to our own reality. But sometimes you forget that. And then in the same episode, they remind you characters are jumping around like they're Spider-Man. And honestly, I just completely accept it at that point. But this was an incredible episode between last week and this week. Easily the most important shocking content since the beginning of this show. And that's saying a hell of a lot. But thoughts, feelings yourself down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. And hey, subscribe if you're new around here, and be sure to ring that bell, of course, so you can see new uploads when I do post them on the channel. And don't forget, you can also support the Patreon, where we have a full live reaction to this episode and all the episodes of this season of Dr. Stone, available on my Patreon if you're interested. And while you're there, you'll also get a video shoutout. So today, we have Fanny Dupont Hot, Sphinx, and Fate. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.